How do you make your website stand out and prevent your designs from being lost in a sea of sameness? With users expecting certain conventions and so many templates overwhelming the market, is it even possible? Absolutely it is. Here's some ways that you can make your web design truly unique. Number one, handwritten elements. Your handwriting is completely unique. I know that school teachers can recognize which of the 30 pupils in their class have written a particular piece of work. And it's those little differences that make something one off. So use your handwriting. Don't use handwritten fonts. Actually write out those headlines, you know, use a stylus digitally or, or, or write it out on paper and scan it in. You can use handwritten elements in so many different ways. If there's a line, draw it freehand or you want to do a texture, you want to do a brush stroke, anything like that. Bring your hand into play in the work, whether it's your handwriting style or whether you're copying another style. You want to copy a more ancient style of graphic design. This is how things are produced in film. People actually use those hand uh, written techniques using their hand to do sign writing. Maybe if you're creating some sort of headlines, you can do markers, you can do all different sorts of things, but just by actually using your hand rather than relying on the precision of the mouse with the digital drawing tools, it can really produce results that are by definition unique. Similarly, you can use physical textures. So if you need a texture for something, don't Type that into a search bar. Don't go looking at the resource site. Why not think about making that for yourself? Actually getting out a pencil, getting out some paper and just making something which you can then scan in or even if you don't have a scanner, you just take a photograph of it because it doesn't need to be exact. This is something you can then take into an image editing software and manipulate and then that texture is something that is truly unique. It's not something that a thousand other people have just downloaded from a website and it's fun. You know, we're designers, we're creative people. We like making things. So enjoy the whole process and you get a real sense of achievement and it's very rewarding to do that. So also get out there and be inspired by designers and artists that are actually making things, you know, in, in physical form and then translating that into the digital and how that's being produced. You can uh, look at these people and I'll put these links in the, in the description and um, begin to think about how you could create things like that into your own uh, web designs. And it could be something you make, it just be things around you. You need a bit of dirt, you need a bit of noise. Start with a photograph of the carpet, the desk, the wall, a scan of something around. You want a paper texture, actually scan a bit of paper and get your hands a bit dirty. And I think this has been something lost with the generation that has only known digital design. Go back and you'll find there's lots of different techniques you can use. Original photography is something that often separates great websites from not so great ones. And if you look at a site and think, why is this so good? Often it's the photographer. There's not something particularly different or wild and crazy and unique about the interface itself, but it's the photographer being allowed to shine. And original photography is always better. Stock photography can almost always be seen and be noticed often with some of you know the free sites and very popular sites one can recognize stock photos that have appeared uh, many many times i've seen sometimes people use stock photographs alongside testimonials well i'm never ever trusting your website now and even in any other case just try and avoid it. Um, there are, are cases where we obviously need to do it, but if you can commission an original photographer, that's going to be a big thing for you. If you have more time than money, learn to do photography, you know, get on YouTube, learn some basic principles about, about composition, about light, about color, start learning to edit them in image editing software and develop a style of your own or for a particular project. But if you have more money than time, it's definitely great to find a photographer whose style is gonna fit the project that you're working on. And that's really gonna elevate your designs. Even when it comes to flat artwork that you may be created, it's always better if you've got 
not putting the the digital file like of this printed work, but actually using the printed format and art directing a little photo shoot and taking a photograph, like in this case of this brochure, that is really going to elevate and be a much better way to present work, for example, in a portfolio, but also um, like this work I did, you know, on a physical product, being able to actually take shots of that in a studio environment is going to elevate it. So whatever it is, it could even be something that appears really boring, like, you know, pipes or fences or, you know, some sort of thing in engineering, but you can photograph that beautifully. Or if it's a any sort of a service company, then go out and shoot it in person. Original photography lifts any website. Similarly, you can also use custom illustrations. And the same principle applies. If you're more rich on time, maybe you're younger, newer in your career, or you don't have a big budget for a particular project, then have a go yourself. Actually work on creating something instead of just downloading something from somebody else. But if you have the ability to actually hire an illustrator, that is a great thing to do and allow them to do what they're good at. And if maybe the website that you're working on doesn't lend itself as much to photography, then illustration is always a good option uh, that you can bring in as the art director that is going to lift the site and give it real uniqueness and give it a lot more personality. Unusual interfaces. Now, as I said at the top of this video, there are certain conventions now when it comes to websites that we are expecting and users expect the navigation to be in the top or that hamburger menu to be on the top right on mobile. They expect to see the company's logo at the top. They expect you know, buttons to look a certain way. But in reality, if there is a site where you are maybe telling a story or it's a short term campaign, then there's opportunity to do much more with the user interface and just kind of have fun with it. And I feel like sometimes people get too uptight about this stuff. Now, I realize if it's something like a doctor's surgery, the website needs to be functional. It needs to be easy for a wide range of people to use. And you need to be able to do the thing you've gone to the website for very quickly. But in many other cases, there's room for creativity. And I feel like, you know, UX designers get a bit uptight really about conventions and we should be able to play with things. That's how the internet's, you know, evolved over the last 35 years of people creating websites for it. and we need to continue to push that. And sometimes experimental websites, they might be for a film, they might be for an event, they might be just for a little storytelling exercise. They give you the chance to create something that's much more filmic and interesting and interactive. So go with it and push it and don't worry about going beyond the conventions if it's something that allows you to and it's appropriate for the project. User-generated content. This again is something by definition that is going to be unique. Now, obviously there are websites like apps, maybe it's a review website, obviously a social media websites where the users are creating all the content and that's what makes the thing different and unique. But even beyond apps, it might be a marketing website. You can pull some of that in. A common thing is like a hashtag that brands promote and they can pull those photographs in and it feels a lot more real and it feels a lot more authentic and combined with the professional photography, which looks very aspirational, but then showing even when people are grabbing snaps of their holidays on their phones, it still looks good. That builds trust with people. And that's just a way for the website to always feel different. Or it could be more of a site where you're inviting people to collaborate. You're inviting them to contribute. And that's what's actually populating the content. There's lots of different ways to do it. But user-generated content is always going to create something that's unique and by definition different from the others. Finally, a creative concept. This is something that will illuminate your work and make it different. If you have some messaging behind what you're doing, if that's not your strong suit, perhaps that's about working with a creative director or a copywriter, I really challenge you to push yourself and think about what is your messaging because sometimes it's a clever headline and that then lends itself to imagery and a story that can then be told throughout the website. And having that singular creative idea which illuminates your website is going to make it more memorable and it's something that's bound to make it stand out. 
There's many more things that you can, of course, pull from the well of infinite creativity, but hopefully these will get you started. Let us know if this was helpful, and until next time, happy designing.